Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Chandra tribal deck, which is a red control deck featuring a wide range of Chandra planeswalkers, including a Chandra Torch of Defiance from Kaladesh Remastered, a 4 mana planeswalker that starts out at 4 loyalty, so it can minus 3 killing a creature right away by dealing 4 damage to it, and then has two different plus 1 abilities, one adds double red to our mana pool, helping us ramp, and the other one exiles the top card of our library, and we can cast that card, and if we don't, Chandra deals 2 damage to each opponent, so if we exile a land it will automatically deal 2 damage, otherwise it can provide a nice bit of card advantage as well. And then the minus 7 ultimate gives us an emblem, saying whenever we cast a spell, the emblem deals 5 damage to any target, so that can also end the game very quickly. Now, why would we build a Chandra tribal deck other than it being awesome? Well, we've got a few incentives, including Chandra's Regulator, a 2-mana legendary artifact, saying whenever we activate a loyalty ability of a Chandra Planeswalker, we can pay 1 mana, and if we do, copy that ability and we can choose new targets for the copy, so that can get out of hand very quickly, and then we can pay 1 mana and tap the Regulator and discard a Mountain card or a Red card to draw cards, so this can improve our hands by getting rid of additional legendary cards that are already in play. Then we also have the full playset of Chandra's Triumph, which deals 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker at instant speed, but if we control a Chandra planeswalker it deals 5 damage instead, so that's definitely an improvement. And then we also have 3 copies of Heart of Kiron, another new addition from a Kaladesh Remastered, a 2 mana legendary vehicle, that's a 4-4 with flying and vigilance, and the crew cost is 3, so normally we would have to tap any number of creatures we control with total power 3 or more in order to turn Heart of Kiron into a creature, but now we can also remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker we control rather than pay Heart of Kiron's crew cost, so it becomes trivial to turn Heart of Kiron into a creature as long as we have a planeswalker in play, which also synergizes quite nicely in the deck. And then, yeah, we've got some of the usual suspects here with Mindstone helping us ramp, potentially setting up a turn 3, Chandra Torch of Defiance, and then a Shatter Skull Smashing, a nice removal spell that's also part of the mana base. At 1 mana, we've got Shock as another cheap removal spell, dealing 2 damage to any target for 1 mana. And then moving up the curve, at 3 mana we've got Sweltering Suns as a sweeper, dealing 3 damage to each creature, but we can also cycle it for 3 mana if we're up against a deck where it doesn't line up all that well. Then we've got 3 copies of Chandra Acolyte of Flame, which starts out at 4 loyalty. The first 0 ability puts a loyalty counter on each red planeswalker we control, including Acolyte of Flame herself, so this is great if we're trying to crew Heart of Kiron, and can also help us ultimate a planeswalker faster, especially nice with Torch of Defiance. Then the second zero ability makes two elemental tokens, which disappear end of turn, and the minus two lets us replay a cheap instant or sorcery from the graveyard, which can be useful with Chandra's Triumph or maybe a Sweltering Suns. And then at four mana, besides our four copies of Torch of Defiance, we also have two copies of Novice Pyromancer, which starts out at five loyalty. The plus one gives all elementals we control plus two plus zero until end of turn, which is especially nice with Acolyte of Flame making those elemental tokens. Then the minus one adds a double red to our mana pool, and the minus two deals two damage to any target. And then we've got two copies of Chandra Heart of Fire, which can plus one to deal two damage to any target, or we can discard our hand and then exile the top three cards of our library, and until end of turn we can play those cards. And then finally we've got two copies of Chandra Awakened Inferno as our curve topper, which cannot be countered, starts out at 6 loyalty, and then can plus 2, giving each opponent an emblem, saying at the beginning of your upkeep the emblem deals 1 damage to you, and then the minus 3 deals 3 damage to each non-elemental creature, and the minus X deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, and exiles it as well. And then going over the mana base, we've got 15 basic mountains, of course, we've got the Chandra Mountain here, 4 copies of Interplanar Beacon, which can help us gain a bit of life whenever we play a Planeswalker, and then 2 copies of Karn's Bastion, which can proliferate, adding additional loyalty counters to our Planeswalkers to help us ultimate, and then 2 copies of Mobilized District, which can turn into a 3-3 creature to maybe help crew Heart of Kiron, and same goes for the 2 copies of Bonecrusher Giant, which can first deal 2 damage, and then afterwards gives us a 4-3 creature, which can help protect our Planeswalkers or crew Heart of Kiron without needing to remove loyalty. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice looking hand. Mindstone into turn 3 Chandra and we even have Regulator to go with it. Up against Goblins. Yeah, Goblins is going to be a tough matchup. Good thing we have... Plenty of Chandras. 
So if I Chandra minus, I could lose Chandra to a hasty goblin. So don't hate plussing here. I know, I know. <laughs> and then do we play Regulator or Mindstone? I guess Mindstone, and then we don't have to show them the Regulator yet. There's a Muxus on top. Hopefully no Chieftain, because that would still kill Chandra here. Ah, just an attack for two. Enough! And a Goblin Matron is going to shuffle away Muxus now. But maybe they have one in hand already. Nope, get some Muxus anyway. Alrighty, so feels like we can do some damage. What if I play Regulator? I guess I need red mana for that. Plus to add mana. And then we'll pay the one. And then play Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. And then add Loyalty, which we can also copy by paying the one. So now we have a six Loyalty, Torture Defiance ready to go. And we'll keep Chandra's Triumph available to kill a scary creature they might play here. Ooh, was not expecting feet into Muxus. Well, let's go full control and maybe we can kill the haste enabler to prevent a disaster. Alright, they found Matron plus Prospector. They can't cast another spell this turn because of Ironcrack feet. So it feels like we got away with one. Opponent finds Krenko mob boss. And then... Yeah, I'm probably just gonna kill Snoop here. And then next turn I can Emblem Chandra. Put on strength to figure out why they can't cast another spell. But it's because of Iron Crank Feet. So Torture Defiance takes one. Alrighty, so what's my sequencing here? I can use Acolyte of Flame and then copy it to add two loyalty. This goes up to seven and then we'll take it from there. And I could even proliferate, but I might be better off just playing another Chandra here. So minus seven. Pay the one. I'll get two emblems, please. And this is ten damage. So I guess we'll take out Muxus. Take out Prospector. And this can just uh, plus to deal two damage, I guess. Yep, you're going down. All right, and then every spell we cast it deals ten damage. We try to do some board control. Possible, I could have gone more after the opponent's life total, but Prospector's kind of scary since that can generate a ton of mana. So yeah, Chandra's Regulator. Pretty fun when embalming Planeswalkers as well. And then Acolyte of Flame can get back Chandra's Triumph, but I guess we can use the Regulator first to discard Mountain. Find a Mountain. I don't think paying the one mana does anything here, but I guess I'll try. <laughs> the 
And then we'll just deal 10 to their face. And yeah, the second minus two didn't do anything. And we'll just pass a turn. And I'm sure we'll find another spell we can cast before the game is over. So we got lucky that they didn't have a turn three chieftain this game. But they did have turn four feet into Muxus. But I guess we also got lucky they didn't hit any haste creature with Muxus. So yeah, this is typically a pretty bad matchup. But uh, we drew pretty well. Could draw with a Mind Stone. I guess that's fine. And that should do it. Chandra's triumph for the win. Very thematic. Sweet. So glad we got to show off Chandra's regulator here. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Three lands, regulator, hearts, Chandra. And then the two mana ability from Chandra is also very useful with so many of the cards in the deck having two mana. Turn one elf. I'm fine killing here. Opponent on red green and a pelt collector. So I could smashing for one, which I don't mind. Just try and keep the board clear. It's gonna be a gruel spellbreaker. 3-3 three, three haste. So given that they made it a 3-3 three, three haste, we could just Chandra add to mana play Heart of Kiron, which can block Spellbreaker. And they wouldn't be able to Ember Cleave me. So that feels pretty safe. Because if I minus, I would lose Chandra to another haste creature. Questing Beast, I guess, would be annoying, but we can still trade for Heart of Kiron. And then Acolyte of Flame is going to give us a very fast ultimate. Alright, Domri's Ambush. Alright, fair enough. That's actually a very good answer here. So, they can trade for both my Chandra and Heart of Kiron. Yeah, the Dombri's Ambush being able to target Planeswalkers makes a very big difference. So that's unfortunate. So for now... I might want to play Regulator. And then just loot to try and hit my land drops. Since Acolyte of Flame's not going to do a whole lot. And then next turn we can play Heart of Fire which can also start drawing cards if we're empty-handed, especially. Right, they make a 2-2 haste, so that actually lines up quite nicely for my Heart of Fire. Don't think there's a huge difference between which creature we kill. Sadly, didn't have the one mana to kill both at once. So worst case scenario, land questing beasts. It's going to be another hasty Zurta. But if they can't finish off Heart of Fire, yeah, my opponent just concedes. Next turn we can kill both creatures, thanks to the regulator. And then we're pretty far ahead. Alright, so even though they had the perfect answer there with Domri's Ambush, I guess they were struggling to empty their hand. Maybe they had an Ember Cleave in hand, which they can't really use once we kill both creatures. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw with uh, keepable hands. Plenty of cheap interaction. It's gonna take a while to play Heart of Fire, especially the second copy. But uh, we'll have a Heart of Giron in play, which we can crew right away. This might be a gross spiral. Mindstone, a nice draw. Is your opponent on a blue green ramp deck? Oracle of Moldaya reveals Ugin, the Spur Dragon. Alright. So for now. Can play Heart of Kiron and Shock. And next turn play Heart of Fire. Opponent's gonna cultivate. Yeah, Ugin Spirit Dragon's gonna be a problem. Luckily it doesn't get rid of my artifacts here. Don't really care about Chandra's ultimate, so fine using one loyalty to get in for four. And next turn, we want to crew Heart of Kiram before activating District, if that's our plan, because then we'll have one additional legendary creature in play, which discounts the ability. It's going to be six mana. For hydroids for five. Well, conveniently dies to my Chandra's Triumph. So we can do that. And then I can make the play I described. Crew with the hearts. And then still have enough mana for district. And yeah, next turn we could potentially kill our opponent. They can't cast Ugin just yet. Could be the same play as last turn. Yep, another Hydroid for five, which is once again going to be met by Chandra's Triumph. And my opponent explodes, so yeah, I mean, we were gonna Chandra's Triumph and then Crew Heart of Kiron District, so that's exactly 9 damage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. I see turn 2 Mindstone, turn 3 Chandra, so I keep. And then we can even plus Chandra for mana to play a 5 damage Chandra's Triumph. Opponent on Monored with turn 1 Courier. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hurt. Courier delivered two packages already. Light of the stage does not find lands, but finds Hazaret Lightning Strike. At least they won't be able to play Hazaret. And for now we'll play a Mindstone. Alright, that's not too bad. Another Chandra's Triumph. I probably want to kill Soulscar Mage just because it can potentially deal more damage to Chandra. And I don't think my opponent will be sacrificing Courier when they have four cards stuck in hand. And then we can deal with it next turn, maybe with Heart of Fire dealing two damage to it. This might be a Wizard's Lightning or another 3 damage Spectacle card here. Alright, Wizard's Lightning finishes off Chandra. 
So I've got a few options. Can play Heart of Fire if I take three, but I don't really want to take three here. Can make the same play of Chandra into a burn spell, this time probably Stomp, and then we can Stomp Courier. That's probably the best. And then we'll play Smashing Tapped. And then next turn, Heart of Fire can deal with a Lava Runner. Now, if they have another Hazoret, that's definitely a difficult card for us to deal with. So hopefully they don't. Once again, Wizard's Lightning kills off Chandra. Ooh, Beacon, that's a nice one against Moderat. That sweet, sweet life gain. Alright, so if they don't go land Hazoret, we should be okay. Uh-oh, there's a land. But there's no Hazoret. Shocks my face. And shocks my face again. And my opponent explodes. Yeah, against an active interplanar beacon. Still at 8 life with a Chandra providing more cards. It's understandable, so... Yeah, Monorets can be a tough matchup if they draw cards like Hazoret or if they have a fast start and we don't have the cheap interaction. But Interplanar Beacon definitely plays an important role in beating the burn decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. We've got a bit of interaction, regulator to combo with our two Chandras. So we just need to find one more land and we're good to go. Let's see what we're up against. Some sort of abs on deck. Ooh, Mindstone. That's a draw. So now we can turn three Chandra. Probably gonna play Torch of Defiance first. Can plus add to red mana, play Regulator. Luminarch Aspirants. Alright, so I'll probably plus and then Chandra's Triumph the Aspirants. Could have also played Novice Pyromancer and dealt 2 damage to the Aspirant there. But I kind of like getting Torch of Defiance in play sooner. So maybe our opponent on an Abs on plus 1 counter synergy deck. As we see Scavenging Ooze. And a Lenor Elves. Well, I don't think my opponent's going to be very happy if I play Awakened Inferno. And my opponent explodes. Well, that was a quick one. Turn 3, Torch of Defiance. Turn 4, Awakened Inferno. My opponent's hopelessly behind. And that's before we factor in Chandra's Regulator to double up on all our abilities. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Mindstone for a bit of ramp. Interaction with Sweltering Suns and then two Chandra Planeswalkers. Opponent with a turn one Steam Vents. Into Sulphur Falls. Mindstone gets negated. Okay. Yeah, I guess if our opponent does nothing, we can just play Acolyte of Flame and then Novice Pyromancer also synergizes nicely with the Elementals, gets negated. And a Midnight Clock. Another Novice Pyromancer, so we've got some options here. Could play Pyromancer, make two mana, play Mindstone. Although given that we have two Pyromancers, resolving Acolyte of Flame seems more important. So then I'm kind of liking Mindstone into Acolyte of Flame by playing Shatter Skull as a land. And then next turn play Pyromancer if it gets countered, so be it. And for now we'll probably make the two elementals. Stomp 
Storm's Wrath. Well, that's unfortunate. So had we added one loyalty to Chandra, we could have saved it. Wasn't really playing around it. Torture Defiance, not a bad draw. So... Could add mana, cycle Sweltering Suns. Yeah, don't hate it. And then play Land for the turn. Doesn't die to Storm's Wrath anymore. Put on passes. And then I should probably just... Let's see. Four, five, six. I guess I can play a Novice Paramancer. If it gets countered, I can play another one by adding two mana. Resolves. Then... I could add two mana beforehand, and then plus one, in case we hit something we want to cast. Don't imagine needing to cast Shatter Skull Smashing in this matchup, so... Sure. Add two mana, because with Torch of Defiance plus one, we have to cast a spell right away, essentially. So if we hit five mana Chandra, we would have needed uh, floating mana already. As it turns out, we just exile the lands. Ah, they're gonna stomp. Hopefully no second Storm's Wrath here. Ah, just double stomp. Fair enough. Plays a giant. Karn's Bastion could be nice. So what am I doing? Plussing here. Hit a shock. Today's my lucky day. That'll do. And then finish it off. And then I'll proliferate right away. Could also draw with Mindstone first. Alright. Proliferate now, in case of more burn spells. Could also put counters on the Midnight Clock, but I don't think that benefits me. Chandra's Triumph deals with Giants. And probably plus here first. Be easy. And then we'll just uh, play the Giant as a 4-3, I think. And then add two mana. Time for sparks to fly. This is just gonna be bad. And proliferates. So next turn I can proliferate and then ultimate Chandra if I want to. Yeah, I think getting a Chandra Emblem is worth it. Opponent are gonna shuffle their hands in the hopes of finding a burn spell, maybe. But they didn't find one. And now I get to Emblem. So Chandra Emblem acquired. And then I can attack. And then we'll just deal two to our opponents. And I can smashing for zero just to deal five to them. And then casting Novice Paramancer will end the game. Let's see if they've got some instant win combo here, maybe. Storm's Wrath, that's fine. I'm not comfortable sticking around. Sorry. 
even if they counter my spell, it still triggers. So I don't think there's anything that can save them now. Alright, sweet. Karn's Bastion ramping out our Torch of Defiance emblem for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Lures of the Dream Den. If this is a Spirit Dancer deck, my hand's not very well equipped. If it's a Pyromancer deck, I don't hate it. Yeah, I'll try it. It's gonna be Mountain Score Spitter instead, so I guess it's just a burn deck. Yeah, I don't think I'll be casting the Smashing when we have double Sweltering Suns in hand. Soul Scar Mage and Infuriates. So this seems like an incredibly aggressive mono red build. Well, at least we've got Beacon for a bit of life gain. Wizard Lightning for one mana thanks to Soul Scar Mage into another Wizard Lightning into a Lava Runner. Well, that's uh, an impressive start. Let's see if they draw a burn spell. Just a land, lures in hand. And we gotta start gaining life here with Beacon. At least they can't cast lures. Ah, uh, we exiled another interplanar beacon, that's too bad. A light of the stage finds Firebrand and infuriates Firebrand. Probably goes face at this point. Alright, I think we're okay here. I can play Heart of Fire. Or I can play Awakened Inferno. Both can finish off the Firebrand and gain me one life. I guess we'll get Awakened Inferno in play. So, got a top deck, another 3 damage burn spell here. Just a mountain. Alright, I think we're kind of turning the corner now. So, let's... Plus... Cast that. Plus... And then I can make mana to cycle, or I can just deal 2 damage. I guess we'll just deal 2 damage. <laughs> if I was at 3 life, I would have added mana to just cast Chandra just to gain the life. But at 4, we should be able to dodge a single top deck. Alrighty, so... Can Emblem... And then cast Chandra, deal 5 to my opponents. Add mana. And then I can cast Sweltering Suns, deal 5, and cast a Smashing for 0. And deal 5. Well, my opponent had an incredibly aggressive start, put me all the way to 1, but Interplanar Beacon kept us alive. And yeah, the Chandras managed to close out the game pretty quickly. Sweet. So the deck definitely overperformed today. We didn't face too many bad matchups and even got lucky to win some of those bad matchups we faced. Because the deck is weak against combo decks and ramp decks. Combo decks because we don't apply a ton of pressure and don't close out the game quickly. And the only interaction is based on burn spells and Chandra dealing damage. And then ramp decks can usually go over the top of what we're doing. But against any creature decks, especially the more mid-rangey ones, we're pretty well set up to beat those thanks to our removal. And then the Chandra's quickly taking over the game. So yeah, the deck's a ton of fun, especially once it gets going with Chandra's Regulator. But don't expect it to be the most competitive deck out there. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. 
And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.